Hello, and welcome to another episode of Umineko. Uh, welcome, welcome. We're playing Twilight of the Golden Witch, and uh, we just started, but uh, it, it's, it's over soon. I, I, <laughs> I shouldn't start the episode with that, but, uh, you know, it's finally sinking in. Also, hey, Kat, thank you for lurking. I hope you're doing good. Yeah, it's 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 starting to sink in that in a couple of weeks that'll be it. That'll be the last one. But until then, we've got a pretty amazing uh, arc coming up. We've only just started on that one, so I'm just gonna skip through the intro that auto plays every dang time, and then. Then we're going to do a little recap, and before, before that, why don't we start off with our content warning, as usual. Content warning for character deaths, detailed descriptions of gore and body horror, child abuse, discussion and mentions of incest, discussion and mentions of suicide, and misogyny. And, uh, surprisingly, uh, if you're new here, that is a... Uh, a much shorter list than some of the other arcs. <laughs> yes, we have fun here. Anyway, um, if you are new here, I recommend uh, not watching and starting over, um, because this is a very long series and we are nearly at the end. Nothing is going to make sense to you. But if you're just here to vibe, that's okay too. Alright, so where we left off la after last time, or before last time, um, Anja showed up in the church, or a church, or it looked to be the church on Dokonjima. We don't know 100% where that is or was, or if it was even uh, somewhere to begin with. But there, um, she's... In her six-year-old form, she's a child. She meets Battler there, who tells her that he's going to sh going to tell her the truth, and that it won't be a sad story. Uh, now last time they did a little bit of uh, arguing about you know the truth and what it means and. I'm just pretty pissed, actually, because, well, she wants to know. She needs to know what happened. And ideally, she wants to go to the island and stay there and basically die with the rest of them. Um, but she joins Battler and she goes with him to the island where she meets up with the cousins, uh, plays around as a good-ish time, and then she's still kind of pissed about not, you know, being told the truth directly immediately. Um, they also meet up with Kinzo, who was like, Wow, hello my grandchildren, I love you all so very much. Here is a present for you. And Anja says, This is wrong, this is not true, this is not what he was like, ever. And Valor just asks her, like, You really don't remember anything? So apparently at one point, Kinzo was actually a pretty decent... Well... Let me walk that one back real quick. At some point, he showed care for his grandchildren. Uh, according to Battle. And Anja does not remember this at all, so... If it's actually true or not, who knows? Um... After that, and the ensuing uh, argument that the two have, they end up outside, and uh, where Battler waits for Beatrice to show up, who arrives, apparently from off the island. They have a lot of uh, flirty banter, as we've gotten used to from them, and she shows Anja a magic trick, 
and then they get ready to go into the house and, and meet up with the rest of the family, specifically Kinzo. So, um, <laughs> it sounds really simple when I put it that way, but this was, you know, there, there's a buildup of seven arcs here, so it, that was a huge moment, actually. But they just, they met up, they had a chat, she did some magic, you know, yeah. I don't know what to tell you. I have a rough idea of what I can cover in this episode today. And uh, I might be completely off because it's impossible to tell how long these chapters are, so I guess we'll find out. The VIP room is filled with the, sm the sweet smell of pumpkin tea, and packed with smiles and laughter. Ah. It's always rough when they start with like, the voices have to put a lot of effort in and then them laughing, which takes, like, it hurts my vocal cords, y'all. I'm stalling. I'm sure you can tell. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Simply splendid. I'm glad to see you in such high spirits. I could say the same for you. What idiot said you're reaching your last years? Ah. Mm. Reminder, um, usually, this time, on the island, uh, Kinzo has been dead for two years. So what's up with that? I just borrow a bit of cheer from you. Once I return to my study, I will be little more than a withering, senile old man. Enough with your lies. Give it up and swear that you'll be living at large until you're a hundred. Same here. I haven't seen you for six years, but I was surprised to see how little you changed. <laughs> you little brat. So, it seems you've learned flattery these past six years. Sorry to disappoint you, but you're hardly a fair judge in the matter. I've grown quite old indeed. I'll bet a thousand yen that Kinza's still doing great when he turns a hundred. Yeah, me too. Grandfather won't be any different when he's a hundred. <laughs> Don't think you'll get any more presents for complimenting me. Kinzo laughed cheerily. Beato, who sat next to Battler, was also laughing merrily. Unjust stood, all alone by the window staring at the others and trying to figure out what sort of relationship the witch of the portrait had with her grandfather. There was a knock on the door. Is that you, Genji? Come in! Pardon the intrusion. Krausama and Natsuhisama are here. Father. Oh, and Balakun's here too. Sorry, I'm having a moment. <laughs> uh, that's like it's great. I love her a lot. Despite, you know, some of the terrible things she's done. Which she re regrets a lot, so you know, that's a point in her favor. It has been some time, Beatrice son. Has there been any news? I'm just the way I used to be. Come, have a seat. And Anja, why are you standing by the window like that? Come over here and sit down. Anja, 
Come on over. I'll just watch from here. Anja grasped the candy she had gotten from Beato tightly. And with a, with a still wary gaze, she continued to stare. Genji offered her a chair, but Anja just shook her head. Let her do as she pleases. Come, Kraus, Natsuhi, and sit. Is it something important? I guess Anja and I should leave. Hey, if you leave, who's, who's going to back me up here? Kinzo, you don't mind if Valor stays, do you? I have nothing to hide. I do not mind. However, he had called Kraus and Natsuhi to the VIP room to meet Beatrice, the Golden Witch. It was hard to imagine that Kinzo wanted to have a casual conversation. After Kinzo said he didn't mind, Beato also asked Bella to stay, so he decided to do so. In order to avoid getting in the way of their conversation, Balor stood up from the sofa and walked over to Anja's window. When the big brother finally came back to Anja, she clung to his waist, as though determined not to let him go away again. Oh, I see. That must be why Anja doesn't like me. Uh, huh? What do you mean? I don't really think she dislikes you. <laughs> Oof. I forgot to breathe during the laugh. Hold on. Six minutes in, and ow. I'll do my best, though. You could never understand women, Battler. Beato smiled at Anja, but the latter turned to look the other way. <laughs> Even a young woman is a woman nonetheless. When Beato stopped laughing, the conversation switched gears. Why on earth did Kinzo summon Kraus and Natsuhi to the VIP room, and what was he going to talk about? Everyone fell automatically silent. Beatrice, Golden Witch. Each and every day, I remember the dead owed by the Ushuramiya family for the time it was saved on the brink of destruction. <laughs> yeah, you'd better thank me. Well, it's actually your grandmother he's thanking. Shut up, you. No, it comes to the same thing. All of that gold has been lent to the Ushuramiya family for three generations and for no compensation. We truly cannot be grateful enough. Gold is no more than a pile of bricks to me. It was a relief to have Kinzo hold on to it, since I had nowhere to put them. Whoa, I'd like to say that just once before I die. Is... The Golden Witch, a rich person. Hmm? Well, yeah. After all, she just went and lent the grandfather ten tons of gold. Precisely. I've been borrowing it for several decades, always promising to return it someday. The debt of gratitude I owe for that favor is now far beyond my ability to repay. Has never forgotten its, its gratitude. Isn't that right, dear? Of course. 
If the Beatrices hadn't so generously lent it to us for three generations, the Ishiramiya family would have fallen long ago. Even someone as shrewd as father couldn't do anything without funds to start with. By now, my money is making money, and the gold that made up my original funds can sleep in peace. Grouse, do you know what I am about to say? Since the moment Kraus had been summoned here, he had guessed about the things Kinzo's words now hinted at. All things borrowed must someday be returned. That day had finally come. Yes, I understand, Father. Beatrice, I do not have many years ahead of me. In fact, this may be the last family conference that we will attend together. How faint-hearted you sound. You must be joking. Beato alone laughed. She looked at Balin, so he laughed along with her. But Kinzo and the others remained silent. Apparently, there existed some major concerns about Kinzo's health. course. I do not intend to die as soon as next to you. However, I don't believe I can make any certain promises about meeting you again next year. Not once have I ever made a promise that I cannot keep. If you say it so proudly like that, I'm in no position to disagree. Are you serious about this? Beatrice, I want to make amends. And I must do it while I still have the energy. For that reason, I made the decision to do it today. What's Grandfather talking about? Quiet. Grandfather is about to talk about something very important. By now, even Balor understood what Kinzo was about to propose. Beato probably realized it too. At one time, the Ishiramiya family had ruled the skies like an eagle, before being crushed in the Great Kanto Earthquake. The eagle had one of its wings torn off, and crawled in the mud, on the point of death. Then, they were saved by the Golden Witch's Golden Miracle. Under the Golden Witch's protection, the eagle had nursed his wounds for many years. And now, finally, it was time for the eagle to leave the nest the witch had provided. All of the gold that your grandmother lent me, I will return to you. Kraus, you have, you have no objections, correct? That gold did not belong to the Ushiramiya family in the first place. Of course. I have no objections whatsoever. Are you sure, Kraus? You're an investor, aren't you? You could always do with more money, right? Didn't you want Kinzo to hand the gold over to you? <laughs> yes. Now that you mention it, it's hard to deny what you say. However, the contract was always between you and father, and the gold was yours to begin with. My husband is, is the successor. Just as father rebuilt the family in one generation, I am sure my husband will make the family thrive in his. And this is something the two of us will do together. Hmm. Well said. That's the spirit. So... You have no regrets in leaving behind ten tons of gold. I must say, that is quite impressive. What can a witch do against an opponent who cannot be swayed by the golden magic? I will return the gold to you. However, 
That will not change the fact that the Ishermia family will always be supremely indebted to Beatrice, the Golden Witch. To return the gold once lent by the Golden Witch. It was both simple and clear. However, the expression worn by the Golden Witch herself was slightly lonely, and she couldn't understand why this was. I can hardly refuse what is being returned to me. <laughs> well, Beato rose from the sofa. Then, she walked up to the window and looked down at the rose garden, waving in the wind. Kraus, I have also decided to present you and the others with my inheritance while I still live. Older. When I die, you will not only be busy with the funeral, but I imagine that you will have Ava and the others at your throats over the inheritance issue. If all is divided now, the funeral will be less trying for you. Kraus. Write this down. And Genji, please be our secretary. I will now lay out the distribution of my assets. Kinzo immediately began explaining how the inheritance would be split up. Balor, realizing that he shouldn't be listening in on this conversation, walked over to where Beato was loitering by the window. Hey, rich person. If you've got too much gold on your hands, I'd be happy to help lighten the load. Gold. <clears throat> wow. Today is a I am not good at talking day. Wow. Time to drink some more tea, jeez. I'm sure it sounds less bad than it, I could hear it in my head, but like I can... I don't know. I can feel the terrain. I haven't actually like talked out loud much the past two days, so that's probably why. Just uh... You know, your, your vocal cord cords are muscles too. You gotta use them, or they just wither away. <clears throat> okay, let me try that one again. Gold would be no less useful if you turned it to firewood and used it to cook a stew. What's the matter? You're looking a bit... you're looking a bit miserable. So, this day has finally come. I do feel a bit lonely. You do? My magic revived the Ushiromiya family and created Dokojima. And now, it seems the Ushiromiya family no longer has any need for the power of my gold. It has taken flight, leaving the nest of my magic behind. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I have called Orokanjima the Witch's Island. My island. Yeah. And now, Orokanjima is returning the gold to me. The day has come for Orokanjima to awaken from my magic. I guess it has. I knew that this would be the last game. However, for that subject to be broached, even in a matter such as this, is surprisingly hard to handle. 
You're the type of person who looks totally carefree, but who's actually full of lingering attachments and regrets. <laughs> the cruel and obstinate ones are usually the quickest to grow attached, and then to feel lonely. That's right. That's the kind of person you are. It was... a game for you and me. It was fun. It's a game you polished to perfection during those six years. I once likened it to an eternal torture for the both of us. Eternity is happiest when you can still believe that it's eternity. But all things must end. And we have to be aware of that. So, we must not avert our eyes. Just as the sun always rises, there's no sun that doesn't set. Of course, Anja didn't have the slightest idea what her brother and the witch were talking about, as opposed to Sam, who very much knows and is already very sad over it. However, even as young as she was, she could feel that the pair had spent an incredibly long time together, and that they understood each other so well that they might as well be a married couple. Then, Beato noticed her reaction. Anji, at one point, the two of us wove games for each other. However, that time is already over. This game has been made not for our sake, but for yours. They were talking in riddles again, Grasp, grasping the key that hung by her chest. Anja looked at their brother's face. We need to show you the contents of the cat box that is this day. That key I gave you is for opening it. What do you mean, cat box? He means this day. He wanted to reach this day so much. Using the miracle of magic that brought you here. You must continue telling the story of this day. As the final witch. Does that mean that I mustn't remain here? Anja's tone was slightly tense. She understood what her brother meant, and it made her frown. Just how long have I suffered, wishing that I could return to the Rok to the Rokunjima of 1986? And now I finally made it here. So why are you chasing me out? You said I could decide for myself. That's right. I did say that. I'm not leaving. And please, stop trying to spoil me with this strange made-up tale. I want to know the truth of this day. <laughs> she's, a mu she's a moody kid, be it 12 years in the future or 12 years in the past. Shut up. I didn't ask you. And what the hell do you think you're doing? Didn't the Golden Witch come here to perform her resurrection ritual? Didn't you appear on the island with a crash of thunder and try to offer up 13 people as sacrifices? Why are you acting so happy and casual? It doesn't make sense. You're the one that doesn't make sense. What are you thinking? Do you want me to be a murderer? He wrote tales about it, sealed them in message bottles, and threw them into the sea. Two of them were discovered later on. Both of them were stories of cruel serial murders. Hmm. What a shame that only two of them made it to shore. How sad that Land, my greatest masterpiece, 
was never seen by human eyes. I've been wanting to ask this for a while, but what's up with those message bottles? As I was working out the details for my game against you, I began creating those tales along those tales along the way. Once I realized that I could create endless different tales out of the same game board, it really started to get fun. So, you wrote them down, hoping that I would read them someday. Precisely. They were so good, I just couldn't bear to wait for your return. Inspired by those classic works set on isolated islands, I tried sealing them in bottles and throwing them into the ocean. Mysterious, don't you think? Don't mock me. Those are your plans for their crime. You use the location of the hidden gold to fan up discontent between the family members. As you planned your brutal serial murders. Sheesh. Is that how I've become in the year 1998? Well, I guess I can't blame them. <laughs> huh? What's with this sudden change of character? Is this some scheme to make me let my guard down? I'm not gonna be fooled, Beatrice. Onichan. You want me to, to you want to make me surrender and say that witches exist, don't you? You think I'll fall for that? I'll find the truth without your help. Even though that truth is all around you right now. You once called yourself credit, but it seems the name Meteal would be more fitting. I I never know how to pronounce that. I've only ever read that. I've never, ever, not even once, heard someone say that name out loud. Ever. It's kind of wild when you think about it, right? Enough. Anja tried to slap Beato's cheek. However, the difference between their heights was so great that Beato dodged before the hand could reach her. Stupid. Stupid. I won't acknowledge it. I'll never acknowledge this farce as the truth. After Anja yelled those words, her eyes grew cloudy. They cleared up almost immediately. By that time, she had already gone back to her six-year-old self. Alright, Anja. This is the sin I left behind, and the reason for this final tale's existence. Huh? As Anja stared blankly, uncomprehending, Beato gently patted her head. Indeed, this tale is a farce. It could not be true. Yet, he was prepared to look past that. No, to make it that way on purpose. For the sake of the message that he wants to convey to you. Beato. I'm already showing it to her. I don't want to force it on her. I see. Um, I don't understand what you two are talking about. I'm sleepy. You're right. We should probably be going. Kinzo. Must I remain here longer? My apologies, but I must ask you to stay a little longer. Moving on. Kraus. The continued support of Fukuin House should be viewed as your, resp your responsibility as the Ushinomiya family head. What a pain. Forgive me, Balor. It seems I cannot go with you. Genji, would you mind taking these two to the guest house? As you wish. Balor-sama, Anja-sama, please follow me. Thanks. Okay, Beato. 
I'll see you later. Of course. I have a mountain of things I wish to discuss with you. And I'd like us to have some, some time alone tonight. <sighs> we must act... <clears throat> we must act the part of a couple every now and then. <laughs> what do you mean, act the part of a couple? <laughs> Uh, they're adorable. Because Anja had gotten so bored, she had grown very sleepy. It would probably be best for her to take, take a quick nap. Balor walked through the windy rose garden, pulling her by the hand. When he questioned their guide, Genji, he learned that the old servant had known beforehand of Kinzo's desire to return the gold to Beato, and settled the inheritance problem early. The master decided to start pre preparations early for his final task in this world, the ending of his life. Most people don't think too much about what happens after they die. <sighs> Guess grandfather's just on a whole different scale. Today marks the day of a new flight. When the Ushiromiya family will depart from the Golden Witch's patronage. That's true. <laughs> it's a pretty cool way to say it. Apparently, a grand Halloween party was, was to be held tonight. Goda and the others had been ordered to start getting ready for it. However, it wouldn't just be a party. It would be a ceremony to mark the return of Beatrice's gold. At the start of dinner, Grandfather would make the announcement. And the Ushinomiya family would give thanks and applause to the, three gen to the three generations of Beatrices for their generosity over the years. Apparently, this is what he had planned. Is it still being kept secret from Dad and the others? Technically, it is a secret. However, the Master did not suddenly begin thinking in this way today. He has often considered this day for, for many years, and has even discussed certain matters with his children. I doubt that any will be surprised to hear this night's announcement. Well... As for my old bastard, he's been running all over the place trying to get money for his company. I guess he'll be dancing with joy when he hears that he's gonna get to unwrap Grandfather's inheritance present early. I rather think that Rudolf-sama will be galvanized by a sense of great responsibility. He has succeeded splendidly since he left the island. However, his success so far has been supported by the Master's will. And now that he's suddenly getting his inherit inheritance money, he'll have to keep going by his own strength alone in the future. By his own st strength alone in the future. <laughs> in fact, it might actually put pressure on him. The siblings must have suffered for decades because of their father's ex excess of success and ability. Simply having a parent who is too successful can be a great burden to a child. Okay, okay, Genji. Oh yeah, mm, those poor children. Th th their dad's too successful. That's the problem. That's the real issue here. <laughs> that does sound like what something Genji would say. Also, these are some of the longest sentences that he says in the entire game, honestly. Wow. Get him talking about Kinzo and it's just like... You know, full sentences. Multiple in a row. Talk to him about anything else and he's like, nah. You got one or two words. And tonight, they'll be leaving the nest. 
truly becoming adults for the first time. It seems the master plans to call this night a ceremony to return the gold. However, he first intended to call it a living funeral. Sounds pretty depressing having a funeral while you're still alive. I'll admit that calling it a day of a new journey and leaving the nest fits through showing your family much better. No need, John. I'm sleepy. Look, we're almost to the guest house. Do you want to go to Mom's room? Or to the cousin's room? Okay. I'll sleep until dinner. Anja, still holding her brother's hand, crouched down and looked as though she was about to fall asleep. Valor lifted her onto his back and carried her. As she felt the warmth and safety of her brother's back, Anja drifted off into sleep. What happened that day? Just what on earth happened? on October 4th and 5th, 1986. Because of the massive size of the Rokunjima explosion accident, the time the explosion occurred was known almost exactly down to the minute. The time was... the stroke of midnight on October 5th. The sheer improbability of that time proved that the explosion was produced by artificial means. Later on, the following statements were collected from individuals who knew Ushirami Akinzo when he was alive. During his lifetime, Ushirami Akinzo built a clock rigged to blow up the island at exactly midnight. This clock was apparently inside his secret study. When he felt mentally cornered and wanted to think up a brilliant plan, he would activate that device and use the tension of the approaching midnight to bring some flash of inspiration to him. While Ushirami Akinzo still lived, this was only thought of as a tall tale about this eccentric man. But the fact that the, Ushira the Rokunjima explosion accident occurred at exactly midnight supported the story. It sounds crazy. He must have hoped to gain some sort of mystical power from those short periods of madness. If we think of it as being his source of high output mental power, the story isn't that difficult to swallow. Professor Otsuki spoke passionately. Witch hunters. Enthusiasts who treat the mad fantasy surrounding Rokunjima as their plaything. Anja had no reason to love these people who embellished the deaths of her family just for the fun of it. And yet, how ironic it was for Anja, who wanted to know what happened that day, that these people were the ones who knew most about that island. If someone used that device, the island would be blown away without a trace. There would be nothing left. No matter what had happened there, they could erase it. Theories that Ushiromiya Eva masterminded some kind of plot sprang up very early on. However, no one was able to explain how she set off such a massive explosion. And the red clock proves that such a thing is possible. Correct. We can theorize that Ushiromiya Eva, fully aware of the timing and radius of the explosion, took refuge in the Kodorina. To get all of the family wealth to herself, she killed everyone and used the explosion to remove all evidence. That idea gives the most logical explanation for the for the Rokunjima mystery. It also conforms with the fact that Eva never spoke to anyone about the events of that day. Where was that red clock, and how did Eva find it? Several forgeries have speculated on this matter, 
There's no need for me to waste time thinking about it. Ava activated the clock device, hid in Kuidorian to ex escape the blast, and was therefore the only one to survive. That was everything. The answer, which eloquently told the whole story. When Ava first adopted me, our relationship wasn't as bad as it later became. I asked her several times what happened that day. Every single time she answered, it was to say that she didn't remember. But, well, she must have been flustered at the time. The very first time I asked, she answered like this. I can't tell you about it. It was a slip of the tongue. She knew what had happened that day. And she left this world without even telling a bit of the truth. She sealed the truth in a cat box and left this world, taking the key with her. There can be only one answer. She was behind everything. She got all of the family wealth to herself and became super rich. And afterwards, she lamented the fact that her beloved son would never inherit any of what she had created, and she cursed me. Just remembering that old bitch makes me want to vomit. What happened that day? That's what I want to know. It's my only goal, and the one reason I'm still alive. However, later on I had to come to grips with the fact that my goal was an ab abstract one. After all, even if I don't know what happened that day, as for who did the crime, the who done it, that is already clear. You should owe me Ava. She's the culprit. That has never changed since the beginning. Yes. I'm not trying to find out what happened that day. I'm trying to find out what Ushirumi and Ava did that day. If I can reveal that, then I can expose Ava's evil, even though she has already died. That is my true goal. The police also suspected that a crime might have taken place and they did investigate. However, no matter how much they inspected the crater that had once been Little Kanjima, they didn't find anything at all. The public and the witch hunters cornered Ava with several pieces of circumstantial evidence, but they were unable to find a single piece of physical evidence. And so, though Ava was only the merest fraction of a shade away from guilty, they were unable to expose her crime. My goal isn't anything as vague as learning what happened that day. It's to expose the crime Ushiromiya Eva committed that day, and to have my revenge. I can't expose Ushiromiya Eva's crime, so people are treating the events on the island as though some bizarre golden witch did it all. Defeating the golden witch means exposing Ushiromiya Eva's crime for what it was. I won't forgive Ushiromiya Eva. I swear. I swear. I will hate her and take revenge for my family. That is Ushiromiya Anja's one and only reason for living. Oh. Okay, so what did you sound like again? She knew she was hated that much. The president would probably be rolling around laughing in the next world. Shut up. I'll expose that old bitch's crime. I'll never accept that she blew all the evidence away and committed the perfect crime. I refuse. In other words, this journey of yours is a journey to take revenge for your family. Got a problem with that? 
You must be joking. It's great to know that you have a purpose in life. Could you turn that off? No? Huh? You don't like M. Zaki? I like M. Zaki. It's a good song. I like one of their other songs better though. But... Anyway. Amakusa turned the radio off. The dull sound of the engine became the BGM that filled the car. There's something strange about it. A fight for revenge. Not really. I've met people who lived for that reason who lived for that reason many times in the front. You've been on battlefields many times as a mercenary, right? Well, I've seen a few. So, are people who fight to take revenge for their families strong? No doubt about it. But some people will even strap bombs to themselves and commit suicide to take revenge for their families. Humans are more than capable of dying for vengeance. That's right. I could do it too. You heard of child soldiers? You mean kids who fight like soldiers? That's it. Kids who have lost their parents and have nowhere to go sometimes get picked up by groups of armed insurgents and become soldiers. They get a gun thrust in their hands and they're taught how to take revenge. But in the end, children are expendable. Anyone could be a soldier on the battlefield if they can pull a trigger. Are you trying to say I'm like that? Revenge can be a reason for living. It can also give you the strength to become a soldier. Like a miracle, it can turn a girl who could do nothing but sob over her parents' corpses into a soldier. Almost overnight. Nothing gives you more power than revenge does. I guess so. And that's what I'm like. Do you know about the child soldier problem? No. Child sol soldiers who are given guns and taught how to take revenge that... Who are given guns and taught how to take revenge make that their reason for living. Well, that's not exactly right. It becomes their reason for shooting their guns. The revenge is something that never ends. At some point, they no longer have any reason for shooting their guns. What do you mean? They used to shoot for revenge, but eventually, they keep on shooting for no reason at all. Because they've forgotten about their revenge? When revenge is impossible, they eventually tire of it and forget their original purpose. When that happens, they have nothing except their gun. Eventually, they'll keep shooting just so they can eat. You're saying that child soldiers who started using guns for revenge end up as bandits or something? After all, they've never even gone to school and they haven't been taught any useful skills as far as employment is concerned. They only learned how to shoot guns. And they were only ever praised when they killed the enemy. Eventually, your reason for living stops being revenge and becomes the means you use to try and take it. It's sad, really. Are you saying that I'll eventually get tired of revenge and... What would it be in my case? You get tired of exposing the truth, and your life will become entirely devoted to hating you should have met Ava. That's true already. Got a problem with it? <laughs> Gonna think of it. That's right. I'm not sure what Amicus is trying to say. Probably something annoying. So I'm not interested.
Revenge is stupid. Is that what you're trying to say? You still have a long life ahead of you, Missy. With your youth, you could do anything. I get the feeling that this journey might be a waste of that precious youth. It's none of your business. I already jumped, really. remember? Off a skyscraper? And you were lucky enough to come out of that alive. Back then, I died. So, I'm already a ghost. And my only purpose is to expose the truth of that day to take revenge on my family's killer. I see. It's an iron rail you've got there, Missy. There's no way a flippant man like you could understand how I feel. After that, Makusa was, was forced to shut his mouth. He shrugged, but Anja didn't see. Even so, Makusa spoke once more. On the first day we started this journey, you said something. You said you wanted to know what happened on that island on that day. It's the same now. What's changed? Now you're saying that you want to know what happened on that island that day so you can expose Shiromiya Eva's crime. And isn't that exactly the same? Well, that's true. I'm tired, so I'll sleep now. Would you mind staying quiet for a bit? Tell me when we get there. Roger that. I wasn't particularly tired, really. I just said that because I didn't like talking about this. Don't become me. A child soldier. Anja, who had decided to feign sleep, ignored him. But Amakusa kept talking. He wanted to make sure she heard him. She heard at least this much. We started on a journey to learn the truth. It's becoming more and more a journey of revenge. A journey to have revenge by exposing the truth. But, as you know, there's nothing left in Rokunjima. There aren't even any traces left. Exposing the truth might not be a picnic. I know what Amakusa's trying to say. The police searched the scene so thoroughly just after the crime, and even they weren't able to find any physical evidence proving that Ishirumiya Eva was the culprit. And a full 12 years have passed since then. If the truth could be discovered by a girl like me, waving wads of cash around to pick up a bit of info from those who are somehow related to the incident, then someone would have exposed the truth long ago. I might not be able to reach the truth. If so, then my first desire, to expose the truth, would probably fade away. After that, only my hatred for Ava will remain. Just like the child soldiers, who forgot their original purpose and lived just as shoot. I will forget my original purpose, and live just to hate. For all my hate of Ushirame Eva, my revenge of exposing the truth will have been foiled. But I will go on hating her anyway, and that will become all there is to my life. Is there any difference between shooting for revenge and shooting to live? When you pull the trigger, someone dies either way. And what about my case? Isn't there any difference between hating Ava as I expose the truth, and hating Ava after I've given up? There's no difference. In the end, whether I find the truth or not, I'll just keep on cursing Ava over and over until I die. What a crappy life. But now, it's all I have left. Ushiromiya Eva stole my family. 
so I'll take revenge by exposing her crimes and showing the world. My consciousness was slowly drifting away into sleep. Why is Oni-chan showing me such a bizarre rok Rokunjima? Is this supposed to be the truth? Enough with this farce. Why is even Onichan trying to hide the truth from me? I'm trying to find it so that I can avenge him and the others. Or would Onichan say the same thing as Amakusa? That revenge is meaningless, so I should stop. Is that why he's speaking in riddles, trying to make everything more confusing? That's none of his business. I'm not just trying to take revenge for their sakes. I'm doing it for my sake, too. After all, that's the only thing I'm living for. Taking revenge is my reason to live. I don't have a clue what Onichan is thinking. Outside, the rain has started to pour down hard. However, inside the cousin's room, it was loud and cheery. It could have been raining spears and no one would have paid any attention. <laughs> Full house. Take that. Whoa. You aren't bluffing. The cousins were all bursting with energy sitting in a circle on the bed. I thought Balor always had crap in his hands every time he acted tough. <laughs> of course, I've been losing all this time just to make you think that. You should have been Balor, the man who loses, loses strategically to win in the end. <laughs> Let's just roll with that. Ooh, Balor's amazing. All my coins are gone again. I'll give you some of mine. Let's crush Balor together, okay? With just a deck of cards, the cousins could enjoy themselves for many hours. They were so engrossed that the occasional thunderbolt hardly even registered as static in the, in the background. I'm starting to get hungry. I wonder if dinner's ready yet. Who knows? It should be ready soon. Goda-san and the others really went all out for tonight. <laughs> Which means we've got a lot, a lot to look forward to. Is this to celebrate my long-awaited return? I heard from Shannon just now that it's going to be a Halloween party. They'll set up a buffet in the hall. Sounds incredible. A Halloween party? <clears throat> A Halloween party? Wow! Wow! Ooh, ooh. Hmm? Hello? Who is it? There was a knock. The door opened, and Anja was there. Anja had been sleeping in her parents' room. Hey, it's you, Anji. So, you woke up. Um, they said it's dinner, so we have to go to the mansion. They said to get ready. Food, food, food. I'm hungry. Perhaps because she was the hungriest, Maria celebrated more vigorously than anyone else. 
she jumped up happily and hopped off the bed. As the others all clambered off the bed and started putting their shoes on, Kiria and Rudolph came into view. Hey, brats. It's time for food, so get ready. It looks like today will be extra special. I can't wait to see. Ooh, I know. It's a Halloween party. Halloween party? <laughs> I know, and Anja doesn't. <laughs> Mom, what's a Halloween party? Who knows? We'll have to go and see for ourselves. Everyone ready? It's about time to go. Is everyone here? Please follow me. Maria, over here. Your collar's crooked. crooked. <laughs> I'm so hungry. The food is the best part of these family conferences. Are you hungry too, Anja Chan? Ava smiled at Anja. Yeah, starving. Anja. Yes, I am, right? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll bet you're starving. My stomach's rumbling too. Okay, let's get out of here. Looks like the wind's blowing hard outside. Make sure you don't lose your umbrellas. Everyone, please take an umbrella. Here's your umbrella, Anja Chum. Thanks, Aunt Eva. <laughs> the girls really are so cute. Come over to play at your aunt's house one of these days. It's a promise, okay? Looks like Aunt Ava's taking a liking to Anja. Yep. Apparently, Mother actually would have liked a daughter. Ah, I've heard that too. I think she doted on me too when I was little. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> that actually just made me really sad. For Maria, all of a sudden. Holy shit. Also, thank you for the follow. Heidi Raw? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm gonna just uh, get some water. Today has been a rough day for reading. Okay, Maria voice, let's go. My mama said she actually wanted a son. Ooh. That's not... Oh, okay. She made me sad, and then grows up made me not sad. If your kid grows up happily, it doesn't matter if they're a boy or a girl. Maria is my precious, precious gift from God. When they got outside, the wind was fairly strong. Ava, who had now re really hit it off with Anja, offered to share an umbrella with the little girl. It was hard to tell what they were chatting so excitedly about, but it seemed that they were already getting along splendidly. Fowler opened his umbrella as he watched this. His little sister was cute when she clung to him, but she was just as cute and adorable when looking up at someone else with a happy smile. The wind and rain were strong, but even this must have been the perfect spice to heighten their anticipation of the coming meal. <gasps> they just... They, they decorated the house. Ah, uh, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> In the original game, unless I'm remembering wrong, because again, I played it like... I say again, like I mentioned that in this episode, but... I played it like 12 plus years ago. 
but I, so again, could be wrong, but I don't think they updated the visuals for that. This is amazing though. Also, look at just the ridiculous amount of food, but I guess there's like more than 18 people, so that requires a lot of food, right? Ah, I love this series. It's so good. Thanks to some festive decorations, the main hall had been remade and into the scene of a Halloween party. There should be a family always took meals in the dining hall. This was the first time I'd ever seen a buffet-style party set up in the main hall. Beato, happy Halloween, trick or treat. <laughs> I have some candy for you, but now is not the time. After all, it's just before a meal. <laughs> Thank you, Beatrice. -san. I see you're looking as beautiful as ever. You too, Rosa. One would never guess you to be a mother. <laughs> Have you been drinking? Your ears are looking pretty red there. Hmm. Well, after you left, <laughs> Kinzo told me he'd come into possession of an unusual drink and, well, a little alcohol never hurt anyone. <laughs> and this coming from a person who tells little kids not to eat candy before a meal. Pardon me. Beatrice-sama, the master is calling for you. I saw Kinzo beckoning from over by the portrait. Go in Korea. When it comes to when it comes to ceremony, that man is always so obsessed with form. It's probably that stuff about a ceremony for the goal's return. This is a huge turning point for their Shimia family. Better go and play along. Yeah. Does make one feel a bit lonely though. <laughs> lonely though. This won't change this won't change the fact that you're the Ushidomiya family alchemist. Perhaps. Then I'll be back shortly. See you later, okay? According to Genji, today's party has a bit of a twist to it. You'd better look forward to it. You make it sound like you did any of the work. <laughs> You're another one who obsesses too much over details. Later. Honey-chan, is something going to happen today? Is it a special day? It looked as though even Anja had picked up on that much. She seemed to be getting tense for no reason. Today is a special day for the Shiromiya family. But it doesn't have anything to do with you personally, so you should just relax. Okay. Ah, that's right. Hey, hey, did you know? I just heard a huge secret from Aunt Eva. Even Maria Onechan doesn't know, but I'll tell you. Oh? What's the secret? So, yeah, I heard that if there's an omen in it, you win. Win? Is this like a lottery or, so or something? Hmm. Uh, anyway, if you get an almond, you win. Anja puffed out her cheeks. Apparently, she wanted to be praised for sharing this exciting secret. But just hearing that almonds win didn't really explain much. Okay. Got it. Thanks for letting me in on that major secret. Mm, you're mean, Onichan. And I even told you my secret. Anja, her cheeks still puffed out, 
headed back to where Aunt Ava was. They really aren't getting along well. Still, I guess I have no problem if it's her aunt. If it was some guy from her class, I don't care if they're both in elementary school, it's not happening. No playing with the opposite sex without Onichan's approval. Jesus Christ, that why are you like this? Have you learned nothing? He probably hasn't, that's be real. At that moment, Genji-san's voice rang out. The chatter gradually subsided, and the rain outside once again became apparent. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask for your silence. Silence filled the room. All the relatives seemed vaguely aware that tonight's festivities consisted of more than a Halloween party. Valor already knew. This was a ceremony to mark the return of the gold from Kinzo to Beatrice, which had been borrowed for so many years. First off, that fact was announced by Kinzo himself. He spoke of how this gold had not only restored the Shirame family, but brought it to a level of wealth it had never before experienced. He spoke of how he would finally return this gold to Beatrice, the one who had saved the Ushiromiya family. A weighty ingot decorated with a bright red ribbon passed from his hands to hers. The debt that the Ushiromiya family owes the, to the three generations of Beatrice, the Golden Witch, is one that we shall never forget. Dear me, I've nowhere to put it, but I suppose I can take it off your hands. Beatrice Sama. <laughs> Despite her status, Be Beato's remark earned her a surprising mourning from Genji. I couldn't help but laugh. Beatrice, the Ushiromiya family alchemist. Tonight, I acknowledge the end of the loan contract for, for the ten tons of gold. Many decades have passed since my grandmother's generation. The time has come for the eagle that lost one wing to fly once more. I will watch over that eagle and I pray for its pro prosperity in all generations to come. Applause filled the hall. Those who just managed to make such a dignified speech, as soon as it was over, she stuck her tongue out and leered at us. Guess that's about the limit to how long Beato can stay serious. By passing her name on through the generations, Beatrice, the Golden Witch, may live for thousands of years. Therefore, even her descendants shall be Beatrice. And all shall be alchemists to this family. The descendants of the Ushiromiya family will praise Beatrice for her gratitude forevermore. And this will be passed on through the generations. This family will always be indebted to Beatrice. And she will always be our family, tied by a noble bond. Let those who agree show their recognition with their applause. It's like the witch coronation scene in uh, Arc 3. With, uh, you know, Ava Beatrice. After Genji's words, the relatives all looked at each other, then started applauding at once. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Beatrice, you are a member of the Ushiromiya family, and your bond to us is more sacred than one of blood. <laughs> I 
The relationship between debtor and creditor is indeed more important than blood. Beatrice Summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After that, Kinzo's long winded speech continued. Tonight, Kinzo would retire as the Ushinomiya family head. Then, he announced that he would reveal the distribution of his inheritance. A stir of excitement spread across the siblings of Money Trouble when they heard that they wouldn't have to wait for Kinzo's death to get their inheritance. I am aware that each of you is in trouble with money. This should be enough to resolve all of those problems. But, do not grow complacent. This is my inheritance, given to you before my death. In the past, though I have been strict, I have always watched over you. However, beginning tonight, your father will cease to provide support of that kind. I shall watch on as you take flight, as though watching down upon you from the heavens. No longer will I interfere. You may live however you please. Dad. We understand. You need to have no fear that we'll take flight on our own. Here and now, all of the siblings swear to work together to make the Ushinomiya family even more prosperous. That's right. If we stick together, nothing can stand in our way. Hideyoshi laughed, but Genji admonished him. However, he could understand why they were so happy. So far, the siblings had quarreled ruthlessly over the inheritance. However, this evening, the inheritance had been neatly split apart, and they no longer had any need to scheme for money. In other words, the siblings no longer had any reason to squabble with, with each other anymore. On the contrary, this was a time for them to join hands and help each other, and help each other become more and more prosperous. Ava and Rosa were sniffling, with tears in their eyes. And so was Rudolph. Perhaps even now, perhaps now, even at their ages, they had finally left the nest. Tonight, the eagles of the Ushiromiya family would leave Rokanjima, the nest weaved from the witch's magic, and go their separate ways, with their own power and determination. It made Kinzo think, if only I had done this from the start. If he had settled the inheritance problem himself, there would have been no need for his children to quarrel at all. Instead, he had acted in a sullen manner, manner and left the problem to them, which had resulted in their strained relationships to each other. Yes, all of that had been his responsibility, and now he was disentangled. It had been like an invisible rope wrapped around Kinzo's body. That rope had now become had now come loose, and he felt a sense of release he hadn't experienced for many years. The four siblings stepped forward, and before Kinzo, they swore to all support Kraus, the new head, and lead the family to greater prosperity. Their faces sparkled with an unexpected youthfulness. It was only natural. After all, the four of them had not been s the four of them had not been so naturally united since the time they were kids. As the vibrancy of their youth returned to them, the siblings banded together once again. When Krause finished his announcement, a warm round of applause filled the hall. The cousins, and the servants too, joined in on the applause that continued on and on. 
Anju watched this, dumbfounded. The four siblings had quarreled with each other constantly since they were kids, supposedly. Supposedly, they had pointlessly locked swords with Kinzo's inheritance of their goal, their worries over money spurring them on. Even the word world of truth, the world I recognize, the world I acknowledge, not recognize, has been rewritten by this golden ceremony. Were they actually friendly toward each other, or did they quarrel all the time like I believe? It doesn't matter. Either way, right here, right now, all of those problems have been resolved. I mustn't believe. This is just... Onichan's force. Even though I knew that fact. When I watched Dad and the others hugging each other, with teary smiles on their faces. I couldn't help but feel something warm rolling up in my eyes. I won't believe it. All of this is just another part of your farce. What will you have to see? What will you have to hear? Before you let yourself you'll let yourself believe. Red. You say it with the red truth. Is everything you can say in red a lie? I won't believe. This is just... Anja looked at, the, looked at the floor and fell silent. As the Game Master, Balor was able to use the red truth. However, that rule only exists in the witch's game board. In the world of humans, red truth doesn't exist. People see things, hear things, and when they believe that something is worth believing, they accept it as a red truth. Unless Anja accepts it, no kind of truth can become true. Valor wanted her to realize this. There was no point in using the red truth, a rule of this game, to force the truth on her. Anja would have to use her own power, her own heart, to accept the truth as truth. The decision was Anja's. No one could force her to, des to decide either way. So, there was nothing wrong with Anja declaring this scene to be a false. But, if so, then what was the meaning of the hot tears dripping down Anja's face? Anja would have to consider that herself, without anyone telling her. After one sniffle and a rub of her eyes, Anja let the six-year-old version of herself take control of her peace. call it there for now which is a lot earlier than I wanted it to be but uh yeah it's it's getting <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to read so that sucks but uh yeah I'd rather save the next bit for when I'm actually you know in, in tip-top condition, I guess. I'll, I'll make sure that I do some more talking before the next episode. <laughs> I think it's getting worse by the sentence, so uh, this is gonna be it for now. But next week, um, I'm just gonna continue on, and then things are gonna get really interesting. So, I, I, you know, if you can make it to the actual stream, I recommend that that you do give it a watch because it's gonna be uh it's gonna be interesting I, I won't say how why or what because that would be spoilers but I promise it'll be good <laughs> all right ow <laughs> uh well this is a nice talking point so I don't 
mind that much. And, uh, yep. No, that's gonna be it for, for now, for today. Let me just, uh, find my end screen. Fancy new animated end screen. Definitely save so I can close this. And play some music. Alright. Thank you as always for watching. Thanks for being in the chat lurking. Thanks for watching the VOD. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a nice day, evening, week. I will be back on Monday, hopefully. Nah, I'll definitely be back on Monday with a regular stream. I don't know what I'm going to stream yet, but I'll figure something out. And then on Wednesday, Mori Mineko. And then hopefully, I'm going to make sure that it goes a little smooth at that time. And then we're going to get into the next section, which is going to be a lot of fun. And bring tissues, maybe? Because if I recall correctly, next episode does get, you know, it gets you in the feels. But it's also a lot of fun, so. Yeah. Alright. Thank you again for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.